This is bad. It moves a lot. Welcome to my channel. With me, Dennis. We will have a look at Uniformation GK2. Uniformation GK2 been around for a while. When it first released, I do not have the chance to review the printer. Yet people keep asking my opinion. Back then, I will tell them I do not like the single linear rail, especially because it is a medium-sized printer and there is a big risk for the printer to be wobbled. And I'm sure some of you remember that. Out of the blue. Uniformation offered me the chance to review GK2 and I had a dilemma. Almost every other YouTuber that I know give a very positive review about this printer. And I thought I'm going to be the bad guy and expose this medium-sized printer bad design because of the single rail. Uniformation GK2 has 10.3 inch screen and the print volume is 228 times 128 times 245 millimeters. And the XY resolution is 29.6 micron. It has built-in heater, L filter, flip-top cover, quick release build plate, and resin tank. And the price is $849. Included in the package is extra steering guard, very thoughtful from uniformation. Extra NFVP, here's the Wi-Fi dongle, and then typical accessories like glove, extra bolt, USB stick. It includes this silicon spatula, it won't scratch your FVP film. And this is the correct spatula to use to scrape resin in your tank, not the plastic spatula. I am also getting extra Wi-Fi dongle. I'm not sure why, probably just logistic mistake. Some tweezer and Allen key, and this straight Allen key, I like this a lot. It is very comfortable to use for leveling build plate, metal spatula, silicon funnel, nipper, and some filters. This printer has such a sleek and compact design. Great placement for the USB port and power button. Most of the body is made of metal. But the top part here, where the cover hinge attached, it is made of plastic. And somewhat weak in my opinion. I think I saw some posts in Uniformation Facebook group where some user experience issue with this. At the bottom of the printer, we can see that GK2 has adjustable fit. At the back of the printer, you can find the power plug and you can place the air filter here. Now, this is just my opinion, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Look at the carbon filter design. At first, I thought it will suck the toxic air from inside the printer and blow out clean air to the back of the printer. But this is not the case. It sucks the air here and then blow out the filter air from this opening. So basically, whenever I open the cover, it blows the rising toxic fumes towards me. But no worry. This is easy fix. I can simply mod the opening and redirect the airflow. I also got this mask just in case. The resin tank made of hard and sturdy plastic, it also comes with its own cover. And this is a great addition from Uniformation because I only ever found such cover for resin tank on a high-end resin printer. It also has fit to prevent dust sticking to the bottom of the field. And the quick release is such an amazing design. No more hassle securing the resin tank or this because you forgot to secure your resin tank. But it is kind of over engineered, especially when it comes to the tank shape. With all the nooks and crannies, it takes uh, extra effort to clean the tank. At least it doesn't affect the performance. Another great and thoughtful design from Uniformation is the blood plate is also comes with quick release design. It fits very well, no wiggle at all. Lock the latch and you are done. No more failed print because you forgot to secure and tighten your build plate. And Uniformation, make sure you will not forget to lock the latch. The latch will drop when you close the cover. But try not to forget too often because the latch could scratch your cover and because the weak top plastic might break, at least in my opinion. Many other users praise the leveling design on GK2 build plate. I'm not sure how I feel about this because in my case, one of the bolts here is either too short or maybe it has defect. I'm unable to fully tighten the bolt at this corner here. And I assure you, my build plate leveling is not as good as usual when I do printer review. In fact, it is not level at all. So my easy solution is raising bottom exposure beyond my usual setting which is maximum at 20 seconds. Expecting I will have a hard time to remove the object from the plate. But 
I do not have addition issue at all. I play around from 30 to 40 second bottom exposure. Everything just slide off easily from the play. Speaking of leveling, I like what I find in their manual. So I'm about to do a leveling test for the build plate and I have a quick look at the manual. The number one said, please fold the test strip twice equivalent to the thickness of three sheets of paper. And I remember back then when people would debate me when I said three sheets of paper is the correct thickness to leveling your build plate. So thank you Uniformation to prove me right here. Factory leveling is not very good in my opinion because they said that you have to fold the paper twice or the thickness of three sheets of paper and over here see only one sheet but I can move it but over here I cannot and I can slightly pull it but at the back two corner I cannot pull it at all so that means the factory leveling is not very level at all so i think i will redo the leveling on my own you know just out of curiosity i'm taking apart the printer sorry i mean the build plate to see so it has spring loaded for corner and this here to tighten the spring and this to this bolt here to lock this corner bolt in place very simple yet a very good leveling mechanism now this is my personal opinion the handle is kind of uncomfortable to hold but understandable because the way how compact this printer is designed and the next thing is i'm not sure what is going on i cleaned the build plate thoroughly before i start recording this video and i never get resin to the top part of the build plate at all but still thinking just to be safe i better wipe it again with ipa and i get this black stain like I'm wiping painted surface with solvent because IPA is also solvent or the plastic that made up the handle here cannot withstand corrosive agent and in the long run even the resin fumes might be problematic for the handle the handle might crack I hope this is just a pain the screen already comes with screen guard installed I love it so now I can confidently ditch the shipper protection film they designed the screen so it can be easily removed and installed in case you want to swap the screen or upgrade to 12K screen. Yes, GK2 has 12K upgrade kit. The light uniformity ranging from 3.6 to 4.1. Not the best result, but not the worst. Still within acceptable range. The printer cover can block 100% UV light coupled with the resin tank cover. You are sure to safe leave your resin in the tank for a long period of time. GK2 definitely not as loud as Screaming Kitten asking for food. Also, not the most quiet printer. It is kind of loud if you leave the cover open because of the air filter. When you close the cover, it can dampen the air filter noise. And for me personally, I can still work very comfortable near the printer. I gotta say, I love the touchscreen. It is very responsive and intuitive. And you can see this built-in storage. This means you can copy your slash file to the printer internal memory. You can also find the built-in heater setting in system setting. And this printer can also help you keep track of your consumable parts. What I like the most from this is the file validation. I think this is to check whether your file has slash error or not. Rather than finding out several hours later, when your print stop mid print itself and waste lots of resin material, all because of slash error. It also shows the amount of resin needed to print the file you want. So you can make sure you have enough resin in the tank. Although I'm not sure how accurate they are, but I like it. At the top left corner of the screen, I think this is temperature gauge. I'm not sure how accurate the gauge is, but I never realized my studio is this warm. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoy and like this video. Also subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support my channel directly, you can become my YouTube member or check out my pattern link in video description. Of all the great design that I see on GK2, the one thing that irked me the most is why at this price point they give only a single rail. The die indicator test result is quite concerning. Let me show you the video and you can judge it for yourself. Aside from that, I'm super glad that my stability torture tests do not have wobble at all. I even print them 
twice to reconfirm. Centralizing works really well. No complaint about that, obviously. The very top letters of this letter model, only 0.1 millimeter white, bold, embossed, and extrude letters. But I am happy with the print quality because I can read them very well. At the back here, the letter width only 0.05 millimeter. I can read the embossed letter. For the extrude letter, I can see the shape, but I am unable to read them. This mer the red panda fur details are very sharp and crisp. The same result with the shield details, but somehow the 2D micron letter here not very sharp. And it is weird because the hood stitching details are good. For this Thermicard Armor model, the 29.6 micron XY resolution really did its job well. Every part of the details are printed very well, especially the head part. The eye detail is super tiny and you can see how well it is printed by GK2. I'm very happy with how this Lady Samurai head sculpt turns out. GK2 is able to show the skin texture details and <laughs> look at how good the eyebrow individual strength. The armor details on the shoulder here is not very sharp, but still within acceptable range, considering the small scale of this bus model. For this three steering wheel model, I strategically placed them like this during printing to simulate uneven healing force. Because, you know, when pulling the build arm side to side, the dial indicator moves, and the result... No wobble, no bad print lines, everything looking great. From the smallest one, I can read all the letters, very well on the screen, except the letters around the turn knob. The second smallest, I can start to read all the letters around the knob here. And this one here, the original size of the file, all the details are very crisp and sharp. So I scale it bigger to the maximum length of GK2 build size, and I'm very happy with the Says, of course, dimension accuracy. If you guys look at my measurement, I guess it is safe for me to say that the printer is accurate. I printed this stability torture test. I strategically placed model to create uneven pulling force. I printed this bigger scale steering wheel. None of them show any wobble or bad print lines. So I have to admit, I was wrong when some of you asked me about this printer before I review it. And I said this printer has a big risk to be wobbled but my test result proved me wrong. Well, you get your money's worth. I do hope Uniformation would consider to make printer with dual rail for their future release because I heard some people not buying GK2 because of the single rail design. And if you happen to watch this video, I hope this can open your mind. I want to offer my apology to Uniformation when I said I will finish the review in two to three weeks. Turns out it took longer than expected because life happens. And I'm grateful that you guys trusted me with this opportunity to review your printer. And I'm happy that I'm wrong about GK2 single rail design. Thank you to all subscriber, patron, and YouTube member. With all your support, I can keep making video and share my knowledge to the world. So please like this video and share it as much as you want. See you guys in the next video.